A caliper, or set of calipers, is a tool used to measure the distance between opposite sides of an object, usually with much more precision than something like a ruler. You can find them in many fields, including woodworking, metalworking, medicine, mechanical engineering, and many other sciences. So while they're not related to electronics exactly, I find myself reaching for my trusty calipers all the time to do things like measure the distance between leads on an electronic component when it's not listed or I can't find the data sheet. The first set of calipers discovered date back to the 6th century BCE, and they were tools used often by the ancient Greeks and Romans to make precise measurements. Bronze sliding calipers from the Han Dynasty were also unearthed dating back to the year 9 CE. Most modern slide calipers work on the same basic principle. There is a fixed main scale attached to one or more sets of jaws and a slider that moves linearly across the main scale. The slider has the opposing set of jaws which move to measure the object in question. You can read the distance measured by looking at how far the slider has moved on the main scale. Many calipers have a thumb wheel that gives you more precise control over how the slider moves and most calipers include a lock screw you can tighten to prevent the slider from moving to hold the last measurement taken. This can be helpful if you need to move the calipers away from the object to read the scale, or if you want to compare the dimensions of two different objects without writing down the measurements. You'll generally find slide calipers in one of three types, vernier, dial, and digital. Vernier calipers use two sets of rulers to get very precise readings. Because they have so few moving parts, they are often more reliable than the other two types. However, learning to read the vernier scale can be tricky and requires some math every time you want to take a reading. Dial calipers are easier than vernier to read, but use a rack and pinion to display the fine measurement on the dial. This added mechanical complexity means more points of failure which means that it's easier to break and harder to fix dial calipers. Digital calipers use a series of conductive pads in the main scale and another set of pads in the slide to measure capacitance as the slide moves. The distance the slide moves is shown on the LCD. This makes digital calipers very easy to use and read, but the battery on mine seems to die whenever I need it the most. Before you begin taking measurements, it's important to zero your calipers, otherwise your readings might be off. You can't zero a vernier caliper because the scales are set in place. If you do notice that the zeros don't line up when you close the jaws, you'll have to read the error on the calipers and add or subtract it from your measurement, or buy new calipers. To zero dial calipers, close the jaws. If you see that the needle on the dial does not line up with zero, Loosen the lock screw on the dial and twist the dial face until the zero tick mark lines up perfectly with the needle. Tighten the lock screw and you're good to go. For digital calipers, once again, make sure the jaws are completely closed. If you don't see zero on the display, press the zero button. Modern slide calipers generally have two sets of jaws and a depth rod. To measure an object like this piece of PVC pipe, close the outside jaws around the points you want to measure. It can help to wiggle the object or move it back and forth while gently applying pressure to the slider to get the minimum measurement of the longest distance on the part you want to measure. To get an internal measurement, use the internal jaws. Similarly, you'll want to wiggle the object so the jaws fit nicely in the opening to get the maximum reading possible. Finally, you can use the depth rod to measure the depth of an object or hole. Rest the main scale part of the caliper on the object and move the slider until the depth rod reaches the bottom of the hole or surface. You will want to make sure your bottom surface is flat and that everything is at right angles to get the most accurate reading. When you have the measurement you want, you can tighten the lock screw so you can look more closely at the scales. Now that we have our calipers locked to the measurement we want, Let's take a look at how to read them. We'll start with digital calipers since they're the easiest. Assuming the calipers were on and zeroed when you started, you can just read the numbers right off the display, and many digital calipers include a button to change units between inches and millimeters. Dial calipers require a bit more effort to read, and they usually only come in either imperial or metric. To read them, find the largest measurement on the main scale visible to the left of the slider. In this case, it's 1.6 inches. 
Then read the dial, which is 68 in this example. Since the dial says it's an increment of 1 1,000th of an inch, we know it's 0 0.068 inches. Add the coarse and fine measurements together and you get 1.668 inches. Vernier calipers can be made with both imperial and metric scales, but they require the most effort of the three to read. The fixed part is known as the main scale, and the slider is printed with the vernier scale. Find the largest measurement on the main scale just left of the zero on the vernier scale. Write that number down, which is 42 millimeters in this case. Then, carefully look at the lines on the vernier scale and find where one perfectly lines up with a line on the main scale. Write down the reading of that line from the vernier scale, which is 3.6. If the vernier scale on your calipers is marked with an increment, then you can easily figure out what the vernier measurement is and add it to the main scale measurement. However, some vernier scales aren't marked with an increment, so you'll have to do some math. Vernier scales are designed to show where the measurement lies in between two marks on the main scale. It's like you've zoomed in to view even more increments in between marks on the main scale. So, to find the value, multiply your reading by the smallest division on the main scale, one millimeter in this case, divided by the number of large divisions on the vernier scale, which there are 10 of for my calipers. For this example, we would get 0.36 millimeters on the vernier scale. Add that to the main scale reading and you'd get 42.36 millimeters. Now that you know how to use the three types of slide calipers, you can begin taking measurements with confidence. I have a set of vernier calipers for when I need the reliability, but more often than not, I reach for my digital set. And if you find that the coin cell battery in them keeps running out too quickly, you can mod them for a little extra juice.